My name is Dr. Kushnam Khasad. I am a sports physio, trained and qualified in Melbourne. I'm going to share with you a couple of uh, techniques that will help uh, those with COVID and um, recovering. Basically, not much has been spoken about the role of physio um, for a COVID patient be it in home quarantine or be it in the hospital. Here's what's helped my clients who've been through COVID uh, in the first phase and also in the second phase at present. So what's helped the COVID client with a saturation that was dropping is that basically the lung involvement and because of the lung involvement and continuous coughing, spasmodic coughing, person's not getting enough oxygen, oxygen saturation is dropping, person's got shallow breathing, a person is breathless, on anxious. So how does one deal with that? And um, this anxiety, uncertainty will reduce one's breathing even further. So along with uh, the medical line of treatment that's already been given, uh, someone with a COVID symptom should start breathing exercises from day one itself. Please do not wait for your oxygen saturation to drop for symptoms of cough to appear before you do something about it. Okay. Deal with the situation from day one of increasing your respiratory strength and respiratory status and basically help your lungs cope from day one so that there is no issue of um, a lung collapse or having an oxygen saturation that is depleting as your infection progresses from days one to day ten. So what we did was um, for the oxygen saturation, firstly, because the person's got shallow breathing and is not able to get, up, get enough oxygen supply, was essential is to have a lot of deep breathing with breathing out with a pursed lip. So basically with a breath in through your nose and you breathe out through your mouth with pursed lips. So the pursed lip breathing actually helps slow down the rate of expiration and therefore the next breath in will be a better breath and therefore a better inspiration. So basically breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth as if you're blowing out a candle. This calms the patient down it helps the patient take in better air supply and you'll notice that if the person has the pulse oximeter on, their saturation will improve. Second thing is most patients would be lying in bed and will not have enough movement. They'll be stuck indoors. Now, as far as the lung expansion goes, your lungs extend from the top of your shoulder to the mid level about that much. So if the person who's got COVID or as a prevention raises their arms up, this arms up raised posture gets lung expansion going. So anyone who's got COVID should be practicing an arm up position for lung expansion. So basically, raise the arm up, hold this arm up position, try and reach for as high as you can possibly go and as you bring your arms down, breathe out through your mouth and get your arms down. So a couple of arm raise movements will automatically help more lung expansion in a COVID positive person and sitting with an upright posture being in bed 
propped up with a number of pillows being upright and raising their arms up often to stretch out will automatically cause the lungs to expand and therefore improve saturation levels. The third thing and important technique to help a COVID person is tapping in the lung zones. So basically because the lungs extend from here to the mid-level junction, start tapping in each of the lung zones. So tapping in each of the lung zones, 10 taps in each of the lung zones on both sides basically improves the lung saturation, um, the oxygen saturation content for the person and therefore if the saturation content improves, the person is obviously going to feel better. Now, once somebody has already had a CT scan and the CT scan tells you what zones of the lungs are more affected with the patches, then the tapping can be in that zone more than the rest of the zones for that particular hold Now coming to the second part, um, most medical people, doctors, nurses and everybody in hospitals, clinics working in under stressful conditions and being masked for extended period of time, um, everyone's got an issue with stress, even they are not getting enough oxygen supply. So those people in the medical field and even those not suffering from COVID ideally should have some breathing exercises, pranayam, uh, yogic breathing, spirometry, whatever it be, something to strengthen and exercise the lungs. It's essential that 
spirometry is introduced for everyone and this will go a long way into having a healthier lung and a healthier stronger lung supply for each practitioner so what is spirometer a spirometer is, this is a spirometer and what does this spirometer do well you see the three balls of the spirometer this is a lung exerciser okay now for a covid positive person um and to each person this needs to be a device for individual use you cannot share this device the mouthpiece is detachable and needs to be washed rinsed air dried for before and after each use so once you've attached this respirator one end of the respirator um goes in your mouth and it needs to be held at eye level i'm going to have it at an angle your aim for a spirometry exercise is to make sure that you raise this ball up when you take breathe in the air and you let the ball stay up for a couple of seconds before you drop it's also important initially that you don't try and raise all three balls at one go depends on how much the inflow of air is required so start with the first ball raise it up maintain that for 3 seconds let the ball drop let go of the air as you breathe out from your mouth don't keep the mouthpiece in your mouth when you're breathing out wait and take another deep normal breath and then repeat the spirometer again so the inspiratory phase take the red one up take the red one up again so 10 reps with a gap with a normal breath in between each inspiratory so this is the inspiratory mode of spirometer the spirometer with three balls can also be used for expiratory all you need is to turn your spirometer upside down and this time you're going to blow out the air and again the same thing the ball is going to rise breathe in breathe out breathe in so the aim for the spirometer exercise is to make sure you keep the ball up in the inspiratory phase or in the expiratory phase by turning your spirometer upside down this ensures that there is enough air flow going in and strengthening just like you would be in a gym and using dumbbells or tarbans to strengthen this is a system to strengthen your lungs and to increase the lung capacity so it's important after a covid person has recovered from covid that after a, the first month that one starts with this to improve the lung capacity and to deal with the pneumonia patches that one has had because of a covid infection now once a covid person has recovered in terms of being hospitalized and has gone home what does one do as far as physical activity exercise playing games does one resume those activities immediately how much rest does one need what is the time duration can someone go back to the gym immediately the answer is no the problem is no one's being advised on what is the exact duration um doctors have been giving and certifying people as fit for work and go back to work or go back to the gym but once you go back to the gym 
or go back to exercise, you need to realize you cannot start exercising at the same intensity. You need to take a step back and go back to the basics of fitness and exercise. You need to start as if you've going, been going to the gym for the first time in your life. Drop the number of weights down, drop the intensity down, start with basic exercises and stretches, start with basic isometric mode of exercises, don't use a rapid mode of exercises, don't go for power and endurance, don't go for heavy weights in terms of lifting, whether it's in your own building gym or a commercial gym. We've seen a lot of cases in the post-COVID that people have tried to reduce their walking, uh, go back to their walking, jogging uh, games immediately without sufficient rest, without sufficient training, thinking that this is just a mild flu, just like a normal other flu that they've ever had, that they're able to resume their exercise activities immediately. And this has caused a lot of problems. People have had injuries, people have had orthopedic issues, disc issues, hip issues, knee issues, the list is endless. And this is because no one's had the advice that they need to go back to the basics. If you do not know what you're supposed to do, please seek advice from a qualified physio or a gym trainer, but do not resume your exercise activity or your games or your playing without adequate advice and training as a precaution. I've also found a lot of people complaining of behind the ear pain because of the standard masks and the elastic masks that everybody has been using. Um, in my opinion, this is what I've found to be the most useful recently is that instead of the N95, why doesn't one use the N99? This is a made in India mask um, currently being used. It's and everyone's been talking about double masking. This mask already has a double layer with a pocket. This pocket is your N99 disposable filter. Your N99 filter goes into this pocket. It's got a nose clip with a foam that gives you a snug fit with no pain. It's got a chin guard that covers your chin up completely. And it's got a back strap Velcro that goes snugly behind your head that eliminates the need for the mask to be behind your ear. And this reduces discomfort, better compliance with mask. And I find it easier to breathe with this. This is easily available on Amazon. Strengthening for those who have not been affected by COVID yet. And for even those who have been affected, it's important that you strengthen the muscle structures in and around the shoulder joint and your upper back which is uh, basically the trapezius so some simple techniques that can help everyone is uh, to do the trapezius strengthening um, i have with me here a simple exercise a loop band which i'm going to be putting around my wrist have this at the height what are you what you need to do is push against this hold this to a count of then 10 and slowly relax so out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, relax, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and relax. Do the same thing with the arm at shoulder height, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, relax, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, relax, and with your arms over your head, at 120 degrees, push out, hold. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, relax. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, relax. Okay. And moving sideways, move it and move your arms back. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Relax. Bring it back. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Relax. So this will ensure that the trapezius is not tight and has enough strength. It's the entire muscle over the entire lung covering the posterior chest wall. So it's important that this muscle stays strong and stays is able to support the strength and require back activity for recovery as well as for prevention.